So welcome to the Year of the Tiger. Yeah, it's me, I'm here really. <laughs> but um, I promised to come on and talk about my process. And this month, because we're leading up to the Year of the Tiger starting on the 1st of February, um, my big project this month is going to be um, the tiger. And I am also um, a tiger. I, I was born in the year of the tiger. In fact, this year is a water tiger and I was born in the year of the water tiger. So I feel like um, it's a very special year. And um, I have kind of avoided um, creating a tiger. Um, I, and I, I can't actually tell you why, but it feels right now to do it. So um, that's obviously what I was waiting for. So um, one of the um, things I'm always being asked for is to show um, my process and um, how I go about my creations from start to finish. So as I have my month in the blooms um, as artist of the month and my opportunity to share everything, it made sense to take a project like the tiger and show you from start to finish how I go about um, the creating process. So I have um, my presentation, which you just saw the first, and I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to talk over it so you can see my slides rather than me. So there you go. So uh, yeah, it's, it's the year of the tiger. And as I say, for obvious reasons why I chose the tiger as my muse this month. But once you decide that the tiger is going to be the muse, um, I have to then decide what type of tiger. So I narrowed it down to the Sumatran, Siberian, Bengal, South China, Malayan and Indo-Chinese tiger. And then narrowed it down further to the Siberian or Bengal tiger. Now, let me see, they're getting clearer. There we go. Um, purely, I suppose, just my own um, delight at the larger, fluffy side of the Siberian. But as well as that, um, obviously, I'm using fibres to create and fluffy is something that I can do quite well so it seemed sensible perhaps to pick the Siberian tiger for that point of view but actually um, everything that I saw about the Siberian tiger I liked with regards to the face and they are the largest which I quite like and they've got shorter shorter legs um, they've, their stripes are brown rather than black, whereas the Bengal tiger, their stripes are black. They also, as you can see between those two pictures, the Siberian tiger is somewhat lighter. Um, and the Bengal tiger has got that more orange tone to it. So I just, for me, I fell in love with the Siberian tiger. So that's why I decided to head that way, let's say, with my own set of prejudices, perhaps. And so the next decision, the next decision is pose or behaviour. Um, when I did my lion, he was very much walking. And um, although in a very particular pose with the glass, he was poor and everything. So sometimes I choose just an everyday occurrence. Sometimes it's just walking. Sometimes there's a very specific um, element of the animal's behavior that I want to show. And this time I was quite attracted to, as we've got two pictures here, as you can see, the, um, the drinking. The, the, the pose whilst drinking was I found, it's almost like, sticking your neck out isn't it but not your whole body not completely relaxed but has to be done so I quite liked that I mean I was watching I don't just do um flat photos I look at videos and things like that and every time I came back to 
that particular pose. And then I saw this chap in that pose, who he is a Siberian tiger, which is fabulous. And he's just, I mean, there were, there were many photos, you know, above sides and whatever. But I love this because it shows his fluffy paws, which they have, and it shows his big beard that they have around their face. Um, and I love that, which is I'm about to drink, but I'm still watching you. I'm not taking my eyes off you. And that kind of sums up, not just the tiger, I mean, the many animals, but for me, it sums up the tiger. And uh, when you look at those back legs, you think they could pounce at any moment. There's no way that that guy is relaxed, drinking water and about to be pounced on. So I love that. So that's why I have decided it won't be this exact position or this exact tiger, but it's just this is the photo that I said, yeah, that says it to me. And now I need to go and find my version of this rather than absolutely produce exactly what you can see here. But hopefully you can see the stunningness as to why I was um, attracted to that. Now, um, here we have where I am going next, which is I now need to create a skeleton um, and around which I wrap the fibres and then start to build up the muscles. And uh, many people are quite surprised that I insist on being quite accurate underneath with the muscles. But this is because, um, I mean, I've... My way of thinking is humans, when we put on clothes, we look different depending on what we're like underneath, big, small, you know, whether we've got large muscles or whether we're overweight or skinny or any of those. We'll look different um, depending on what's underneath. And to me, it's the same with animals with their fur because they have their skin and they have their fur. And quite often, even if it looks like um, they're not hairy, type thing that, that it's very flat there is still an immense amount of fur on animals or hair or whichever type of animal they are and especially with the Siberian tiger because he's quite fluffy even more so but it it makes a difference and with this particular pose I'm going to start off building the skeleton like this in this position the walking position standing position and um, I won't felt it to within an inch of its life because I will then need to get it into its pose. And like the animal itself, those muscles will move when you get him into the crouching position. And he is definitely a he and not a she into the crouching position. So I still need it relatively soft so that I can move that around. And then when he is in position and all the muscles are in the position then I will felt him um, so it's harder more solid and won't be poseable other than you know moving the paw here or there um, he will actually be um, felted into that pose uh, yeah so but this is where I start off and um, this is I'm quite excited now um, and hopefully I'll be able to show you um, along the way the process, the fact that um, some parts are quicker than others. Um, sometimes I zoom along and don't put the piece down and other times I just need a rest and I go and do something else, another project normally. Anyway, hopefully um, that's given you a bit of an insight. Shall I? Let me pop back to me a minute. Here I am. <laughs> so, yeah, um, hopefully that's given you um, an insight into um, this part of the process. And um, I will be back on Monday to show you the building of the armature and where I've got to. So, uh, yeah, that'll be good to catch up with you then. All right. Speak to you soon. <laughs>